Lee from California, Ms. Lee. Gentleman from California is uh, recognized for a minute and a half. Thank you, and I want to thank our ranking member and my friend for yielding. Mr. Speaker, members, I rise today really with a very heavy heart, one that is filled with sorrow for the families and the loved ones who were killed and injured this week. Only the most foolish and the most callous would not understand the grief that has really gripped our people and millions across the world. This unspeakable act on the United States has really forced me, however, to rely on my moral compass, my conscience, and my God for direction. September 11th changed the world. Our deepest fears now haunt us. Yet I am convinced that military action will not prevent further acts of international terrorism against the United States. This is a very complex and complicated matter. Now, this resolution will pass, although we all know that the President can wage a war even without it. However difficult this vote may be, some of us must urge the use of restraint. Our country is in a state of mourning. Some of us must say, let's step back for a moment, let's just pause just for a minute and think through the implications of our actions today so that this does not spiral out of control. Now, I have agonized over this vote, but I came to grips with it today, and I came to grips with opposing this resolution during the very painful, yet very beautiful memorial service. As a member of the clergy so eloquently said, as we act, let us not become the evil that we deplore. Thank you, and I yield the balance of my time. Gentlewoman's time has expired. The gentleman from Illinois. I'm pleased, Mr. Speaker, to yield one minute to Mr. Kearns of Indiana. The gentleman from Indiana is recognized for one minute. Without objection. I thank the gentleman from Illinois for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in strong support of this resolution to use force. Earlier this